In this last WooCommerce video for Woo Week, we'll focus on customizing the cart page with another free tool. Now, if you'd like to check out the other videos on customizing WooCommerce that I've recently released, check out this playlist once you've watched this video. Now, let's start off by taking a quick look at the end result, and then we'll get started on building our own custom cart page. So this is the kind of thing that we're going to be creating. Really simple looking layout, but has all the things we need and we have control over the styling, the position, and quite a lot of the different options. Even though this is a free plugin we're using, still gives us a great starting point for creating customized cart pages. So we're going to take a look now at how we can recreate something very similar to this. For this video, we're going to be using the free version of Elementor, a plugin for Elementor, and specifically, we're going to be using that cart function. So once I've installed that, I've got everything ready. We're going to hop over into the dashboard of WordPress and start setting things up. We just need to open up the cart page, which is automatically created when you install WooCommerce. And once you open that up, you'll see all we have inside there is a little short code. So what we can do now is we can just remove this. So let's just edit this with Elementor. That'll open up the Elementor editor, and then we can just remove anything that we want from inside this layout. So this is what we have to start off with. Let's just get rid of this. This is the default setup as part of the theme that we're using, which incidentally is the free version of Astra and one of their starter sites. So what we can do now is we can scroll through until we find the new options that have been added as part of Woolamentor. Now there are more options than this, but I've disabled those just to keep things clean and simple for this tutorial. We have three different items, cart items, cart overview, and coupon form. And these are the three key parts that make up a typical cart page with WooCommerce. So what we can do is we can insert those into our design and we can lay them out however we want to. So let's just say, for example, we want to start off with the cart items. We can just drag that into our editor and you'll see this now pulls in a pre-designed layout for our actual items for in our cart. Now, this is pulling in and using some of the predefined layouts that we have as part of this theme. You can override everything inside here. So if you're not using any kind of theme styles as part of Elementor, you can just basically set everything up as you want to. So full control over pretty much every element we have here. So let's kick things off by taking a look at the cart items option. If we take a look on the left hand side, we've got a range of different things we can do. We can enable and disable any of these features. So for example, if we didn't want to use a thumbnail, we could disable that just by using the checkbox. If you want to rename that to something different, you can just change the title of this and we can just say image and you can see that will update and show us inside there. We can control what happens if someone clicks on the thumbnail image. We open that up. You can see we can choose to zoom or we can go back to the product page. Personally, I like to use the product page because sometimes when you land on a cart, you might think you want to go back and check out the product itself. This is a nice, easy way of doing it. So we'll just enable that option and that now becomes a link which will take us back to the product details. You can repeat this entire process now going through all these different sections inside you to either remove what you do or don't want and update any kind of ter uh, terminology that might be used. You can even control different things based upon what device is being used. So your desktop, your tablets and your mobile. So let's just tweak a couple of the values on here so you can see how it all works. Let's just change product to product name. And if we want to make a change to the price, for example, we might be only working in one currency, we can set that on there as well. And we'll change quantity to the abbreviated version. There we go. So pretty cool. If we come down, we've got the bottom section, and this allows us then to control what we see underneath, which is our buttons, applying coupon codes, those kinds of things. So if you don't use coupon codes on your site, you could just simply disable that completely, and that removes that from there. The same goes for your update button. You proceed to check out and show back the shop buttons. So if you don't want those on there, you don't need them. You can easily then come into the styling option and start to tweak and configure anything you want on here. So you see we have full control over how the table looks. So we've got all the options. If we want to put a background type inside there, we can set a background. And you can see it looks pretty ugly, but it's very easy to set up. We can just remove that from there, just clear that. And you have all the normal controls you'd expect inside Elementor dealing with the styles. So we can control the style table. We can also deal with the table heading. So we might want to have this a little bit more in keeping with the color scheme we're using. So let's just change the background color. We'll change this to one of our pre-saved colors. And we'll choose this option. And if we want to, we can just reduce the opacity on there a little bit, just to make it a little bit lighter, a little bit less in your face. And the same goes then. We can change the typography if we want to. We can change the color of that to a different color, tweak the brightness on there get that what we want. If you want to change the typography itself, you can do that inside there, drop images in, adjust the padding, all those kinds of good things. If you want to make changes to the product image, you've got controls for that inside here. You can apply border radiuses, so you could do something like, we'll set a pixel percentage value on there, just like 50%, and we end up with a round image. If you want to apply things like hover effects, you can do that. So you can just go to 
the hover state, apply a CSS filter, for example, and we'll say we'll just reduce the saturation to nothing on there. And you see when we mouse over now, we get that effect. So pretty cool, all really easy to do. You can set that up as you want. And then you've got the things like your product title and so on. I don't think I need to go through all of these because they're pretty self-explanatory. They're just styling options for the various different components that make up the various different elements of this particular section of the card. When it comes out to things like your buttons and so on, if you want to adjust those, you can do that. So you can change this, for example, we could say we could set the color on this and we'll set that to be one of our pre-saved colors and you can apply that on there. So the remove button now when you hover over it, we get that effect, those kinds of things. You've also got things like your coupon button. If you had that activated, which we've turned off, you can control that. And the same goes through then for all the different buttons. So we might think the proceed to checkout button, for example, we might want to change that a little bit. So you can adjust things like your padding on there. So you can see we could change that. You can adjust them independently as normal. So we might want to adjust the sides of this a little bit better. So we'll just say the left and right gets slightly more padding and now that's a little bit more in keeping with the size of the other buttons on this if you didn't like the look of it with a larger button you can change that very very easily so once you've gone through set everything up for all the listing of the different products you've got in your cart the next thing we need to do is add the extra features in so let's come back into our cart items and scroll down until we find those so we've got cart overview and coupon form so again if you don't use coupons you can disable this don't include it whatever you kind of want to do but probably most shops are going to use some form of coupon so what we're going to do is we're just going to simply add a new section in and we're going to set, split this 50 50 and then on the right hand side, that's where we'll drop in those extra widgets. So again, let's just find those inside our section. And we're gonna just grab the option for cart overview. And we'll do the same thing then for the coupon side of things. And we'll drop the coupon form just above there. Okay, so we now have the key components all set up. And as you can see, we do need to do a little bit of work to make sure that everything is all in keeping. We need to just sort of add a little bit of spacing around some of these items. So we just put in, say for example, 30 pixels on there. You can see like this button, for example, doesn't kind of tie in. So we've got full control over that. We can select that particular widget. We can change coupon code, the button text, the alignment of it. We can come into the styling. And again, we have all those styling options. So all we need to do is just change the things like the background colors and so on. So if we come down to the apply button, we can come in and we can say we want to set the background inside there to our global color. And now that's a little bit more in keeping. You want to change your fonts, your typography, all those kinds of things. And the same goes for your cart totals. All we need to do is select that. We can change things like the heading size on there, make it a bit smaller so it's not quite so in your face. And if you want to adjust the styling on there, you can do that in the same way. And again, we've got the table option so we can easily come in and adjust the table border type, the colors, table content, all those kinds of things, your proceed button and everything else. So now you can very easily come back up here and think, well, I don't need two proceed buttons. Doesn't make a lot of sense. So now you can come into your button section and you'll remove the proceed to checkout and then just make any final tweaks that you might want to to your overall design and layout. Once you're finished, you just need to save or update your page and then you are pretty much ready to start testing things out. And if we hop over to the front end of the site, you can see this is our checkout page. Everything is set up the way we've just done it. And if we want to carry on making any changes to this to make sure that everything is perfectly consistent, you can do all of that just by hopping back in and making any tweaks and changes. Now, if you're ready to get more out of WooCommerce, watch this video next. If you got value from this video though, well, why not hit that thumbs up button? It really does help me out. But if you didn't get value from the video, well, feel free to hit the thumbs down button twice as that seems to work pretty well too. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts and until next time, take care.